from Penn Trafford. This is Wake Up Warriors. Wake Up Warriors starts now. Good morning, Penn Trafford, and welcome to this edition of Wake Up Warriors. Today is Wednesday, April 8th. I'm Zach, and co-hosting with me will be Austin. As constant updates from Governor Wolf and President Trump are broadcasted, sometimes it can be hard when recommendations contradict. Because of this, we sent Nick Konopka to speak with civics teacher Mrs. Smith to learn more about how national and state powers interact in response to COVID-19. With the ever-changing situation we are in due to COVID-19, sometimes it seems like the laws are changing every day. But what gives the authorities the ability to set these restrictions so rapidly? Because it's an emergency declaration, the president, and even under a state of emergency, the governor has expanded powers where they don't have to go through the legislatures to make those things official. They can still sign executive orders, which they are doing at both federal and state level, to make those things have more legal authority. According to the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution, the state governments cannot contradict federal laws. However, since most states enacted their social distancing guidelines before the national government, the president could not reopen the country even even if he wanted to. It's kind of a gray area in terms of what any level of government can do at this point, to be honest, because we're really testing the limits to our constitution in a way that we've never done before. The state level is in charge of protecting the health and welfare of their students. The federal level has to make sure that our constitutional rights are protected and that they protect and regulate interstate commerce. How they do that without interfering with each other at this point is where it gets a little bit tricky. Because of the need for swift action, these issues of power will most likely not be argued until after this state of emergency is over. All we can do now is follow guidelines set by both levels of government to help flatten the curve. This has been Nick Konopka reporting for PTTV. The season of spring is upon us, bringing with it seasonal allergies. Many people are starting to confuse allergy symptoms with symptoms of the coronavirus. To eliminate this confusion and differentiate the two, we sent Tyler Grupak to find out more. As spring starts to unfold, another season is also starting up. Allergy season is here seen by almost everything currently blooming outside. However, allergy season could not have came at a more complicated time. Many people are confusing allergy symptoms with symptoms of the coronavirus. Sneezing, runny nose, facial pain, post-nasal drip, and itchy eyes are common symptoms of allergies. Meanwhile, the common symptoms of the coronavirus are fever, shortness of breath, and dry cough. Although both have a different range of symptoms, it's better to be safe than sorry. So when you sneeze, sneeze into your elbow, take your allergy medicine at a safe, consistent rate, know your sneeze because an allergy sneeze is more of a continuous sneeze where you can't stop while a coronavirus sneeze is not typically a non-stop one. And finally, just stay at home. If you're not sure, just stay at home to be safe. But the difference in symptoms is very distinct, and a person should realize when something is up, especially since people who suffer from allergies are so familiar with their symptoms because they come back every year. Reporting for PTTV, this has been Tyler Grupak. With the spread of COVID-19, essential workers' day-to-day -day lives have changed quite a bit. With more information on this, here's Walmart sales associate Ryan Cease. Some of the ways my workday has changed is normally I'm scheduled in lawn and garden and when I go to work now, I'm not in lawn and garden. I go straight to grocery or toilet paper and I fill whatever's needed. I will stock the shelves whenever they're empty because that's pretty much anything that people are buying. Lawn and garden's considered a non-essential part of the store so they're not really worried about it. So they send most employees especially young employees, to the essential parts of the store to help stock up in those areas. Some changes I've seen at work so far is the use of gloves and masks with employees. They don't uh, mandate it, but most employees do wear gloves or a mask. And they're talking about potentially doing temperature readings on employees when they walk through the door, which would mean if your temperature is above a certain temperature, then they would send you home because fear of you having the virus. And they've also put a cap on the number of people that can be in the store at one time, which is 784, including employees. So if that number would surpass 784, they would have to start turning people away. Because of the stay-at-home order, more people than ever are working from home. We sent Colby Sherwin to find out the challenges that come with this new way of work. Because of the coronavirus outbreak, working from home is now more common. I sat down with two people to find out how their jobs have changed. I am the executive director of Bethany Christian Services, 
and adoption. So as executive director, I'm usually in the office. We have to do that all by video conferencing. Um, and even our staff meetings are now, we just did, it to, did our staff meeting today and there were 36 of us on a Microsoft Teams meeting. I am a fifth grade teacher at Franklin Regional School District. Um, my job has changed dramatically. Um, I traded my classroom in for any corner of the house that I can find that's quiet. I'm on my computer the entire day instead of being with students. Teaching online, by far the hardest part is that I'm not with my students. So um, first off, I'm not able to be my normal personality. It's kind of awkward on a camera. I'm also not able to help the children that need my help. For PTTV, this has been Colby Sherwin. The coronavirus has affected high school students all across the country. Many people feel for the class of 2020 as they are missing out on some of the best moments of their senior year. In addition to the seniors, the underclassmen are affected too. Maddie Kerrigan talked to a senior and some underclassmen of PTHS to see how the pandemic has affected their current year in high school. The coronavirus has affected high school students across America. I talked to four students from our high school about how the coronavirus has affected them. The coronavirus affected my freshman year with me not being able to play lacrosse or see my friends. I think online school has been difficult to adjust to as well. That it's definitely hard not being able to go into school and talk to your teachers and learn from them when they're right in front of you. I think online learning is hard, but I think it's something that we will all eventually adapt to. AP tests are not going to be four hours, they're going to be 45 minutes, and it's going to be more free response and open-ended type questions. We don't know when our musical is going to be after we put hours and hours of work into it. So we just have to hope for the best and stay inside and wash our hands and try and get this virus away. Coronavirus has just changed my life completely. You know, I used to go to different sporting activities of myself, um, but that's just done now. And it's pretty crazy to see how um, something can just turn your life around. So I hope the coronavirus is just solved as quickly as possible so I can get back to seeing my friends. We can only hope that the coronavirus ends soon so all seniors and underclassmen can go back to enjoying their time at PTHS. Stay safe, stay inside, and wash your hands, PT. This has been Maddie Kerrigan reporting for PTTV. Whether it be keeping in contact with others or streaming movies and TV shows, many people are using different applications to stay busy. Alyssa Napolitana reported on some popular apps for your time in quarantine. Being stuck at home and practicing social distancing has left many people to turn to their devices for communication and entertainment. Although we can't physically be with our friends and some family, keeping in contact is still essential. For Apple users, the obvious choices are FaceTime and iMessage to stay connected, but there are also apps such as Zoom, Google Hangout, Google Meet, which many students have been working with, or Facebook Messenger or Google Duo that both allow Apple users and Android users to video chat and message multiple people at once. On the entertainment side, number one on iTunes charts is the app TikTok, which tends to keep many occupied and have a good laugh. These videos can also be shared with friends to have a conversation about. Following TikTok on the charts are Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Hulu, and Prime Video, and if you are subscribed to these services, there are thousands of movies and TV shows to watch. There are many apps out there to check out to stay connected and entertained, so look into some of these or discover something new. Reporting for PTTV, this has been Alyssa Napolitana. During our quarantine, we have so much extra time. Why not take the time to learn how to do something new? Here are a few new skills that you can learn what, how to do. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be showing you a couple things that you can learn how to do at home during our quarantine. Number one, you can learn how to play a new sport. This can range from golf to basketball to whatever you can do outside. Uh, it's so nice out, so why not just enjoy the weather and learn how to do something new? Uh, number two, I'm personally learning how to skateboard. So that's a fun time. Another thing you can do is learn how to play Sudoku. So a lot of people don't know how to play Sudoku, and it's personally one of my favorite things to do, especially on like plane rides and stuff. So you can always YouTube the ideas and they'll teach you how to do it if you don't know how to already. You can also learn how to play a new instrument. I know my friend is playing the ukulele. She ordered it off of Amazon and uh, she's been learning new songs and they sound pretty good. So last but not least, you can always learn how to do origami or make a paper airplane if you don't know how to. 
those are pretty easy and all they require is a piece of paper which we all have due to school so i hope you have a great day i hope to see you soon painting is another great activity to take up while in quarantine it encourages people to get creative and de-stress if you're looking for something fun to do grab some paint paint brushes something to paint on and follow along at home with this virtual painting how-to by sarah bender want to make something colorful creative and fun Follow along here to learn how to paint this scene from Disney's Tangled. Start by covering the top half of the painting with light purple, dark purple, and dark blue. To add detail to the water on the bottom of the canvas, add highlights of light purple through the blue, as well as some dark purple and red. Then wait about 10 minutes to let the background dry. Let's dry, add a second coat of light purple. Swirl in dark blue, blending up into the light purple. At the top, blend in dark purple and dark blue, and blend white into the clouds. Next, begin to paint rounded black mountains in your dark blue and black section of paint. For the water, re-wet the blue paint on the bottom of your canvas. Streak in white across the canvas. Add in light and dark purple into the water. Add black into the bottom corners to keep a shadow, then streak in white and light purple across the bottom half of the water. Add white to the top left, middle left, and bottom right of the water. Blur in white to create a mist at the base of the mountains. Add red and white into the water. Create a series of towers in black starting at the mountain and rising into the sky. Add in pink highlights and red. Next, create the outline of a boat using yellow along the inside. Use white and yellow to create a lantern, then use a dry brush to smear the edges. To finish out the painting, add a lantern by making a small pink rectangle with a yellow oval on the bottom. Repeat this across your painting as many times as you like, with varying sizes. This has been Emma Bender, reporting for PTTV. Thank you for watching this edition of Wake Up Warriors. I'm Austin, and co-hosting with me was Zach. Stay safe and healthy, PT, and have a great day.